in this is love, not that we love, but God that God that, that He loved us and sent His Son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Beloved, since God loved us so much, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God. If we love one another, God lives in us, and His love is perfected in us. By this we know that we abide in Him, and He is in us, because He has given us His Spirit. And we have seen and do testify that the Father has sent His Son as the Savior of the world. God abides in those who confess that Jesus is the Son of God, and they abide in God. So we have known and believed the love that God has for us. God is love, and those who abide in love abide in God, and God abides in them. Love has been perfected among us in this, that we may have boldness on the day of judgment, because as He is, so are we in this world. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear, for fear has to do with punishment, and whoever fears has not been perfection in love. We love because He first loved us. Those who say, I love God, and hate their brothers or sisters, are liars. For those who do not love a brother or sister whom they have seen, cannot love God whom they have not seen. The commandment we have from the family is this. Those who love God must love their brothers and sisters also. The word of the Lord. As you're able to extend with me as we read the words of the Holy Gospel, reading from St. John, the 15th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus says, I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine grower. He removes every branch in me that bears no fruit, and every branch that bears fruit he prunes to make it bear more fruit. You have already been cleansed by the word that I have spoken to you. Abide in me as I abide in you. Just as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Those who abide in me and I in them bear much fruit, because apart from me you can do nothing. Whoever does not abide in me is thrown away like a branch and withers, and such branches are gathered, thrown into the fire, and burned. If you abide in me and my words abide, and you ask for whatever you wish, it will be done for you. My Father is glorified by this, that you bear much fruit and become my disciples. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. Well, we've been led to believe by things like movies, for example, that we ought to be prepared to give our most important messages to those we love when we ourselves are close to leaving this world. When we are close to dying, we're led to believe that we ought to give to others some great word of wisdom that might live on at the time of our death. But in truth, words people utter can just as easily be indecipherable as profound. Words that we utter at the time of death can be as easily defiant as they are a blessing for others. What would you like to say to your loved ones? when it is time for you to take on your new life in eternity? What wisdom would you like to leave to your loved ones? What words of advice would you give to them so that they might carry with them in their life? Might be a 
a blessing, a word of blessing. It might be a defined word. It might be a word that's indecipherable. When Walt Disney, you remember Walt Disney? When he died, you know what he said at the time of his death? He said and declared quite boldly, Kurt Russell. And uh, no one really knew what he meant. Kurt Russell didn't even know why he was calling out his name at the time of his death. Some of you might remember Joan Crawford. When Joan Crawford's maid began to pray, the actress snapped back at her, don't you dare ask God to help me at this time. You might remember Lou Costello of Abbott and Costello. Here is what Lou Costello said at the time of his death. That was the best ice cream soda I've ever tasted. But sometimes gems can come from the mouths of those who are dying, words that are maybe worth hanging on to. Martin Luther, the one that we name our Luther Church after, when he died, he said, we are all beggars. This is true. We are all beggars. Thomas Edison said, it is very beautiful over there. And finally, George Harrison, maybe some of you remember George Harrison of uh, the Beatles, the lead guitarist. Guess what he said at the time of his death? Do any of you know? Love one another. Love one another. What would you say to your loved ones to sum up all the wisdom that you've gleaned over your years of living? In our scripture passage for today, Jesus is doing this very thing. He's gathered those who are the nearest and the dearest to him, and he's giving them some words of wisdom. The Gospel of John shows us a moment from Jesus' last hours, and the Gospel of John gives us these words of Jesus that he wants his disciples to remember, to know the wisdom of what it is to love, of what it is to live, of what it is to be part of this beloved community that Jesus Christ himself created. And so, in Jesus' last hours, he says to them, I am the vine, and my Father is the vine grower. So what we receive in this is we have an immediate image of something green, and of something that is growing. Something which when the fruit ripens, will make something even more wonderful and delightful. I am the vine, and my Father is the vine grower. And we also have an image of someone tenderly caring for the vine, making sure it's planted in just the right soil and given the proper amount of water and the optimal amount of sun. Someone who's pruning the branches on the vine to make sure that they are healthy and strong and to make sure that they are producing indeed fruit. So this is the image that we receive from Jesus. I am the vine, says Jesus, and then he goes on and he says, you, my friends, are the branches. You're not the vine. I am the vine. You are the branches. And so Jesus is talking about the family tree, the family tree of God. Each of us is a product of our families. We are the product of not only the people who gave us birth or raised us, but of generation upon generation of people we never knew, but whose influence lives on 
in us. Think of the things that you have picked up from your parents. The way you pronounce words. The inflection in your voice. Your tendency to get extra loud or maybe extra quiet when you're angry or disappointed in someone. Then realize also that your parents pick those things up from their parents. And their parents pick things up from their parents and so on and so on and so on down through the generations. You say to yourself when you're younger, oftentimes, you know, I will never say that to my children when I become a parent because my mother said that to me and that just irritated the daylights out of me. I am never going to say that to my children when I have children. And then the day comes when, lo and behold, those same very words mysteriously come out and you don't realize it until after you've said it. <coughs> you find this to be true? We are a product not only of our parents, but of their parents, and their parents, and their parents, of generations of people that have lived. The traits of our families abide in us. And we have some families here today. Just look around you and maybe share with each other. The people that are sitting next to you, share a trait of your family that lives in you. Maybe it's the color of your eyes. A trait uh, in my family that I carry now is from my father. My father has gray hair. And lo and behold, I have gray hair. that you have, or maybe a grandparent has. Go ahead, you can talk in church. Talk amongst yourselves. Part 
of us and becomes a part of our very being. It abides with us. It remains with us. Abide in me, Jesus says, as I abide in you. We don't use that word very often, but Scripture likes to use that word, abide. Who Jesus is abides in us. Who Jesus is remains in us is another word to describe the word abide. Abide in me. Abide in me as I abide in you. Because Jesus goes on to say, those who abide in me bear much fruit. Now every baby that comes into this world does so after abiding, right? For a period of time, ideally about nine months, in an environment that is intended to give that baby, to give her everything that she needs to grow and to thrive. To abide in Jesus is to have this beautiful, evidence nurturing environment of that true vine that Jesus speaks about. It gives us everything to thrive. Something wonderful, something beautiful, something that is life-giving. Jesus is the vine. We are the branches. We abide in Him. And abiding in Him, Jesus says, we bear much fruit. And elsewhere in Scripture, this fruit is described as love. It's described as joy. It's described as peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. This is the fruit that Jesus gives us as we abide in Him. And then Jesus goes on to say, love one another as I have loved you. Our culture tells us that love is a feeling. It's a feeling, it's not that jolt in your heart that you receive when you look at someone and you realize, this girl is for me. And you get that feeling, that jolt in your heart, right? That makes you brave enough to ask her to marry you. It's the jolt in your heart when you look at someone and you think, this man is for me. Love certainly is this. Love is, love is this. Love is that melting feeling when you hold a baby in your arms. That does something to you, doesn't it? Love certainly is this feeling. Love can also be that joyful recognition when you see your brother or your parent or your best friend after a long absence. And you have this homecoming with them and you have this beautiful feeling inside. Love is certainly this as well. But it is equally important for us to understand that when Jesus says, love one another as I have loved you, it is imperative that we look beyond the notion of love just as a feeling. The love here that Jesus is describing is actually a decision. The love here that Jesus is describing is actually an action, not just a feeling. It is an action. Love one another here means be kind to one another. Care for one another. When someone is hungry, give him food. When someone is thirsty, give her something to drink. When they are strangers, welcome them. When they are naked, clothe them. When someone is lonely or sick, care for them. When someone is sick, go visit them. You've heard these words before. In these words, Jesus elsewhere in the gospel is describing love. And there's one essential ingredient found only in the gospel of John. Here in John's gospel, Jesus says, 
There is no greater love than this, than to lay down one's life for one's friends. And there are many ways to lay down one's life. You lay down your life when you go without sleep to stay up all night with a sick child. That is how you lay down your life. You lay down your life when you choose forgiveness over bitterness. When you choose forgiveness over hatred. When you choose forgiveness over resentment. This also is how you lay down your life. You lay down your life when you go not halfway, but when you go all the way. When you give all of yourself to help someone in need. Love one another as I have loved you. The words from today's gospel are among Jesus' final words of wisdom for those whom he loves and calls his own. Love one another as I have loved you. It's not an easy thing to love one another. It is not an easy thing even to love the unlovable or to love our enemies, as Jesus says. So we need to be strengthened together in that. We need to be strengthened to help us love one another as Jesus declares us. And so our fellow prayers will be coming to the altar to receive a meal that helps strengthen them in this very type of love. And you will come forward to receive this meal, to allow Jesus once again to abide in you, in you, in Jesus, so that you might be loving to the people who live around you. What would you like to say to those who live around you? What would your words of wisdom be? Words of wisdom that you have for others that live with you and around you. What is the deepest and the most heartfelt truth you long to share? with one another. Love. Love. And so we come to the meal of love. Amen.